Good morning, everyone. This is Hebon Lee, and I'm going to present my work on spatial temporal outdoor lighting aggregation on image sequences. The goal of this topic is to estimate the sun direction on a given image sequence. Obviously, the sun direction can be calculated from the GPS coordinates and the timestamp, but if such information is not available, we need to figure out the lighting from the images. Using the prediction, it is possible to augment virtual objects to a real scene video like this. However, predictions based on the single images often result in unstable augmentation. On the contrary, our method provides a stable lighting throughout the sequence. There were several methods for outdoor lighting estimation. One branch investigated single image-based lighting condition estimation. Papers with this approach get an input low dynamic range image and output either a sky map texture or sky parameters required to build a sky map texture. Another approach is to use an entire video sequence to estimate the changes in the lighting condition in time-lapse videos. Unlike these two branches, we utilize the fact that the sun's direction doesn't change that much for a short video. In this way, we can assume each image in a sequence as a sample to figure out the lighting condition of the sequence. Here is the overview of our method. The lighting conditions estimated for images in a sequence like this will be treated as samples in the temporal domain. On top of this idea, we advance one step further. We generate random sub-images from the given images and perform single image lighting estimation for each sub-image. Those estimates are then the samples in the spatial domain. We aggregate the spatial observations to get the representative estimate for each image in the sequence. After that, those estimates are calibrated using the estimated camera algo motion. In this way, all the estimates from individual camera coordinate systems are unified in the global coordinate system. Once they share the same coordinate system, a similar aggregation process but now in the temporal domain is performed to get the final result. Let me move on to explain our method in detail. For each sub-image, we perform the single image lighting estimation. Our network receives an RGB image and outputs a 3D unit vector pointing to the sun direction. We train the network in a supervised manner where we calculated the ground truth sun directions from timestamps and the GPS coordinates. The training is guided by three loss functions as presented here. The first and the most important loss function is the cosine loss, which minimizes the angular difference between the ground truth and the predicted sun directions. The second loss function ensures that the estimates to be unit vectors. The last one is to assure the sun is in the upper hemisphere as we do not consider nighttime where there can be more than one light source. The final loss function is the sum of the three loss functions. This is the structure of our lighting estimation network. It is composed of multiple bottleneck blocks where the convolutional block attention modules are applied on each bottleneck block. In this way, our network can focus on important spatial and channel features, and it can avoid vanishing or exploding gradient problems. A global average pooling layer is adapted to connect the convolution network and the output layer, and it serves as a tool to mitigate possible overfitting. The dense layer at the end then refines the encoded values into the sun direction estimate. To perform the spatial aggregation, we first randomly crop an input image into n sub-images. 
They are scaled to match the input size of our lighting estimator, and the estimator predicts the lighting directions. Then, we apply an outlier removal algorithm to remove outliers in the predicted values and run the mean shift algorithm to find the densest point of the inliers. Here is an example of spatial aggregation. From the noisy observations, outliers denoted with X marks are removed. The spatial aggregation result is indicated with a blue star, which is the densest point of the green dot in layers. Our spatial aggregation design is based on the analysis of various lighting estimation methods. Here you can see three outdoor images, the overlaid images, and the salience maps in four column blocks, which correspond to our method and three previous methods. Red regions on the maps indicate the pixels contributing the most and blue the least to the network's outcome during lighting inference. We found that all lighting estimators can estimate the lighting condition on small localized image features. In our experiment, we also observed that when letting the networks estimate the lighting on many small parts of the image, we achieve better performance on average when compared to training on the full-size image. The previous spatial aggregation step is done for each input image and outputs a stable lighting estimation. The resulting sun direction is, however, in its own camera coordinate system. To do the aggregation across the image sequence, we need to unify the observations made in different coordinate systems. Therefore, we utilized estimated motion data to compensate for the camera rotation applied to the global coordinate system. After applying the inverse of each rotation matrix to the corresponding estimate, we get the estimates sharing the same coordinate system. On these values, we apply a similar aggregation step to get the final result. We employed the Sun360 and KIDI datasets in our work, as the ground truth sun directions are available for both datasets. Sun360 is a set of 360-degree panoramas. We collected 20,000 daytime outdoor panoramas from the dataset. For the training, we generated eight sub-images by evenly dividing the azimuth range. Our KIDI dataset is composed of 3,630 images from randomly chosen driving sequences. We generated 32 sub-images from each image to match the number of images of the Sun360 dataset. In the test process, the number of sub-images was fixed to 64 for both datasets. We evaluate the angular errors of the spatially aggregated sun direction estimates on the Sun360 test set. At first, single image lighting estimation results are gathered using the three previous methods and our method. Then, we compensate camera angles and apply our spatial aggregation process on the predictions to acquire the spatially combined estimate for each panorama. This graph illustrates the cumulative angular error of the predicted sun directions. Since the previous methods were trained with only the Sun360 training set, we also present our message performance when it was trained only on Sun360. Here you can see that our method performs better than the previous techniques, even with the same training set. For the KIDI dataset, we can further extend the lighting estimation to the temporal domain. To demonstrate the accuracy gain obtained through our pipeline, we plotted the sun direction estimates of each step for four test sequences. In the plot, all predictions are registered to a common coordinate frame using the estimated camera algorithm. motion. 
individual estimates for sub-images are represented with gray dots. Our spatial aggregation process refines the noisy observations using outlier removal and mean shift, as you can see from the black dots. Those estimates for each frame in a sequence are finally combined in the temporal aggregation step, whose output is shown with the green dot. The ground truth direction is indicated by the red dot. Using the spatial temporal filtering, the average angular error over the test sequences recorded 7.7 degrees, which is a reduction of 70% from 25.6 degrees for single image based estimation. Our model's stability is better understood with a virtual object augmentation application. Other lighting parameters, such as the sun's intensity required for rendering, are manually determined. When the lighting conditions estimated from one random sub-image for each frame are applied, the virtual object's shadows are fluctuating compared to the ground truth result. The artifact is less visible on our spatial aggregation research and entirely removed after applying the lighting conditions obtained from the spatial temporal aggregation. Here is another augmentation example. The gray car is illuminated with single lighting estimates, where the green and the red cars are using the sun directions from the spatial temporal aggregation and the ground truths. While the shadows and reflections of the green car look like the ground truths, the gray car's appearance changes a lot in the sequence. We conducted a small experiment on different combinations of loss functions. This table represents the combinations we considered and their corresponding average angular errors on the Sun360 test set. The L cosine metric was set as the default loss function as it dominantly drives the training. The result shows that our network performs best when the three loss functions are utilized together. We interpret the performance gain from including L norm as removing ambiguity comes from different points in the same direction. The graph on the right side shows the cumulative sun angular error for different aggregation strategies on the Kiri test set. The best result is recorded when the mean shift result on the inlier as much is utilized. The performance gain of the spatial aggregation process is further analyzed on the Sun360 test set. The graph on the left side shows the cumulative angular error graph for the low observations, and on the right side compares the results for three lighting estimation methods with four different aggregation strategies. The average angular error of each method is decreased after applying the proposed spatial aggregation. This result demonstrates our method generality, showing that it can increase the accuracy of any lighting estimation method. Thank you for listening.